So today we're gonna to talk about the three most challenging things about building a business with your kids. In this case, my 11-year-old son, Colton, who we've started Arte Shades together, a really cool sunglass brand for young athletes to block out distractions so they could be the best version of themselves, play by play, pitch by pitch, game by game, moment by moment. And it has been one of the most rewarding and most fun things that I've gotten a chance to do. I think one of the reasons for that is that we haven't put any pressure on this, meaning this is not even that it's a side hustle. It's a business that I don't need to work. And what I mean by that is financially, I don't need it to work. I don't need to sell 50 pairs today to pay bills tomorrow. And I think that takes a lot of the pressure off in that this is something we can both do and grow without the burden of, oh my God, this has to work or we're not gonna be able to eat this week or we're not gonna be able to pay our staff or we're not gonna, you know, overhead or any of that. We're, we're doing this in a way that is low lift, low risk, high reward. And that part is awesome. The part that's been challenging is what I wanna talk about here in this video today, being a dad, being a husband, being a, a, you know his baseball coach, you know, being, uh, you know, an entrepreneur in my own right and running, you know, a very large company in my own, uh, you know, my day to day. And these challenges are, I don't think they're unique to us. I think they're unique to everyone that would want to start a business with their kid. And the first one is that he's 11, <laughs> right? And so it's not even the level that, you know, he doesn't have business acumen of someone who's older or those stuff. It's like, it's, it has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that he's 11, He's got other, he's got friends, he's got video games, he's got baseball practice, he is distracted easily, he is, and that's totally normal, right? Like, it's not about, <clears throat> oh my God, he's 11, he needs to be on hustle and grind, hustle and grind, like, that's the exact opposite of what we want. <clears throat> but the fact that he is 11 and he has different things that he's into, the things that he likes to do, the way that he lives his life, the, uh, you know, like, that is part of it. And that's what I want him to have. Like I want him to have an amazing childhood. I don't want him to miss going to a friend's birthday party because, you know, we got to shoot ads tonight or we got to do like, and I want him to want to do this. And I think that's been really cool. It's been fun when he wants to do this and then we spend time on it. And again, if there was that pressure of, we got to pay the bills, this has to work today. I think that changes that. And so, you know, he's 11. He There's a skills gap to an entrepreneur who is, you know, 25, 35, 45. And so, you know, but I love that we're teaching him these skills. I talked about, I think in the first video that I think the biggest thing that we can gain from this is that he's learning how to create ideas, generate ideas, bring them to life and then sell them. And I think if if you can learn that, if you could teach that to your kids, they can literally do anything that they want to do in life. Anything. Because at any point, things get hard. They could just come up with an idea, make it, sell it. And they'll be set for life with those types of skills. Whether that's creating a video, creating a physical product, creating an idea, a SaaS product, uh, you know, just coming into a company and seeing an opportunity and then being able to sell that opportunity to them. That is like the ultimate skill that I think I'm hopeful that I can transfer that to Colton and then to my other two kids as they get a little bit older and they want to do this as well. So yeah, I mean, he's 11. So I, that's thing one. Thing two is, uh, goes right along with that is it's finding, you know, blocks of time to work on the business. And he is, first and foremost, he's a student. He goes to school five days a week. He leaves the house at 8.15, gets home at 3.15, and that's five days a week. Then he has homework. Then, you know, he's on a very competitive baseball team. They're one of the top teams in the country and they practice four to five days a week, games two to three days a week. And those games, you know, two to three games on Saturday, three, two to four games on Sundays every week. And so that is, so you've got to find these pockets of time on a Friday night when you have Friday night off. Maybe, uh, you know, we're in Florida, so we get a lot of rain outs. So leveraging those rain outs. We had Monday night off this week. And so on Monday night, we came in, we shot one of these videos, which uh, I think I'm going to throw up this weekend. We shot a video, we started going through our summer collection and started picking out new colors, but like we had like, I mean, an hour and we optimized it, but finding time to work on it. Also for myself, like, you know, I have two other kids that I love spending time with and I coach their teams and I want to be there for them. I'm a husband. I want to actually like hang out with my wife every once in a while. Doesn't happen very often, but we want to spend some time together. And then, you know, I'm running a very big business in my own right at Gromit where, you know, it takes, I mean, really my whole heart, my whole focus, my whole attention to build that business where we want it to be into, you know, in that, that world, a nine figure going into a, a 10, 11 figure business 
um, it takes a lot of work. And so, you know, spending, focusing and finding time blocks is super important. And it is one of our biggest challenges. And the third one is <clears throat> getting my ego out of the way and allowing him to make decisions, even when I kind of know that they're not the right decisions. And there's two sides of this. One is, what if his ideas are actually better than my ideas? And it's going to hurt my ego that I said we need to edit a video this way. He wanted to edit it that way. His way might actually be better than mine. The second is, I have to allow him to express those decisions and put it out into the real world and see if it succeeds or if it fails and teach him that it's okay to have an idea that doesn't go well and it it doesn't perform at the, at the way we want it to. It didn't get the same number of views. It didn't get the, the conversions. It, no one cared about it. It didn't get any comments or people didn't like it or whatever it is. And I don't even think I'm trying to save him from that, but I'm just like, hey man, that, that that's an ugly font. Let's change that. The hell do I know? And you know, in, in what I do every single day at Gromit is, you know, we launch 20 new products every Thursday. And what I, what we say there is like, I never know which one's going to rise to the top of our charts. We have a product of the week every week. And if I had to pick the product of the week on Thursday, you know, that I think is going to win on the next Wednesday, seven days later, I'm wrong 80, 90% of the time. And so I have to allow him to make these decisions that he thinks are cool. He likes this color. glass. Like we went with his choice of color for glasses. They worked out really freaking well. Like he wanted these clear and blue ones. I wanted nothing to do with the clear and blue ones. I thought they were cheesy. I didn't like, they're the hot sellers. He wanted pink and blue. I thought that would kind of be cool. It's, it's in, it's like cotton candy and like that crush. Those are all his ideas. I have to allow him to make decisions for himself. I need to not be stubborn. I need to not let my ego get in the way of letting his genius shine and letting him, you know, allow himself to empower himself. And I need to empower him to make those decisions. So yeah, those are, um, those are three things I was thinking about that are, you know, just really challenges. One, he's 11, two, finding time. And then three, allowing him to make decisions for himself as we build this business together and start to generate some real revenue, real sales. I mean, we're selling hundreds of pairs of glasses. Like it's super cool, but what happens when we get to thousands and tens of thousands of pairs of glasses, which is where we want to get to and allowing him to be a much bigger part of it. And getting myself out of the way and just being more of a guide and a mentor and someone that can give him an on-ramp to success is where I want to be in all of this. So if you're starting a business with your son, uh, you know, what's your biggest challenge in starting a business with your with your kids? What has been one of the biggest blessings? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're building a business, if you are building, if you are creating something with your kids, would love to hear about that. So let me know, drop a comment below. We'd love to connect and meet you guys and all that good stuff. Find me at Greg Roulette on the Instagrams and the Twitters. I would love to connect there. So that's it for today. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.